Okay, welcome to this short tutorial on how to use Fusion 360 to create a simple key tag. Okay, so initially you would have created yourself an identity in Autodesk Education and you would have then downloaded the software and finally turned it on and it looks something like this. Okay, just a little bit of brief orientation over here. Um, you've got a looks like a toolbar sitting at the top here with all the various different functions underneath them. You hover over them, you'll see various different operations that can be done. And you'll get to use all of them, or most of them anyway, at some stage. So we'll just use a few of them, and um, but they're there for you to explore. On the right here is a browser, and the browser will give you some of the information that you need. Particularly pay attention to document settings over here and units. So make sure you're in millimeters. Um, you'll see your views and a list of all the major operations that you do. Down the bottom of the screen over here, where I'm hovering now with my mouse, bottom left hand side, you'll see a timeline where all the different things that you do will be shown in icon form. There's also some other small tools over here, um, some grab handles to move your object around, um, some zooming and zooming in and out, and some display settings which are useful if you ever need to use them. Um, for example, your visual style, um, what, how do you want to see your object, do you want to see hidden edges or not. Um, that's there for you to look at. We don't have a lot of time, so we're going to move straight into it. We're going to create our key tag. Now, to do that, I'm going to start a sketch. So up in the sketch toolbar over here, I'm going to select rectangle. And you notice that straight away we've been given a three-dimensional plane. We now have to choose one of these surfaces to draw on, because we're going to draw parametrically, which means that each one of our, our um, lines in space, our two-dimensional lines, are going to be related to each other through parameters or through dimensions. That's different to modeling with freeform, which takes shapes and objects and pushes and pulls them, as in the case that, that you see over here. So we're going to model parametrically. So we're going to choose a plane. It doesn't matter which. I'm going to select this plane here. And how do I know what plane it is, where we are in space? We'll look at the um, your, your map of space over here. And you can see where the various different axes are. They're color coded. So I'm going to choose this axis here, which is the ZX axis, and we're going to draw on there. So straight away we've got a top view. We'll be looking at a two-dimensional space. I'm going to select my rectangle. Notice here on the left-hand side the sketch palette has opened up. We'll use that some more very soon. But let's just for the moment select our rectangle. We're going to use a rectangle, which is a... Looks like I've selected a two-corner rectangle, but I would prefer to use a different sort of rectangle. So let's go down to a, a center rectangle. I'm going to snap into the center there and draw out, and I've got myself my rectangle. Now I've got two dimensions, one of them's highlighted. I'm going to make that 60, and by hitting the tab button, I can move across to the other dimension and make it 40 as per my requirements for my students. 60 by 40 by 6 millimeters thick are the dimensions for this key tag. Okay. I'm going to hit enter after I've selected those two dimensions and you can just tab between the two of them if you want backwards and forwards if you need to adjust them and we've now begun our sketch and you can see that there's an enclosed surface area highlighted in a slightly different colour over there ok, next thing now is we want to round these edges and we're going to use a thing called a fillet to do that so in again the sketch menu, go down to fillet there it is and the descriptions conveniently come up there for you, select fillet and then you're going to require to select a vertice, which is where two lines are, and you can see the red fillet has occurred there. I'm clicking on both of those. Now I'm going to hold the control button down now as I'm doing the rest of this, creating a line chain so that all of these fillets that I do will be related to each other. And if I want to change one, I'll change them all. Like the three musketeers, or four musketeers really, one for all and all for one. Now, I get a choice to see how big do I want this fillet radius to be. It's 10 millimeters. I'm going to change it to 8. Why? Well, just because I want to. And they all change to 8. If I didn't select them all with the control button, I'd have to change each one of them individually. Hit enter, and there's our fillet's got our rounded surface. I'll make this a little bit bigger. I'm using my center mouse button, sorry, center mouse rolling wheel to make it bigger. I'll grab the, the um, pan handle, grab this to bring it down into view. I can hit the escape key to get out of that. And now let's place a hole. I'm going to do this with a circle um, because it's on a two dimensional shape. So I'll create a circle. And here we are. Lots of different sorts of circles. Center diameter circle is probably the most useful one that we're going to use here. 
and I'll get a choice. It tends to snap to that same radius. I could place it somewhere else if I wanted to, and then dimension. Um, I might just do that for you so you see what happens. I'll just place it here. It's not in the right spot. And we'll make it a 5mm circle. So I'm typing in 5, hit enter, and I've got a 5mm circle. There it is there. But I'm not really happy with the positioning of that circle. So I'm going to try and change it by using dimensions, which are a form of constraining. So if I r use my right mouse button now, and right click my mouse button, I get a whole lot of possibilities I can hear. Basically it's a summary of all the commands that I can see at the top on this top bar. It's like a quick reference here. And the, especially the latest ones that I've used. At the moment I don't have dimensioning in there. So I'm going to look for dimensioning down in sketch. And down here in sketch there's dimension down the bottom. I select dimension. Now I'm going to select the distances between that line and the center point of that circle. Whenever you do your dimensions, bring them outside of your object. It makes it a whole lot easier for you to be able to to see and not clutter up your drawing. Well, I want that to be, oh, let's say, um, let's make it 10 millimeters, that distance. 10 millimeters. Now I want the same distance from the upper edge, so this edge and the center of the circle over here. I'm going to make that 10 millimeters as well. Take it outside, make it 10, and there it is, sitting right where I want it at 10 millimeters. Now, if I wanted to change those dimensions, let's say I wanted to, I changed my mind, I want to make it 8, double click on them, type in 8, and it'll go to 8, and I can do the same with that dimension, type it in 8, and it goes to 8, which is in fact the radius point of the last two of the previous fillets that I did. Okay, so I'm good with that. Now notice that your drawing's getting cluttered up with all of these particular little shapes. These are these designate a constraint. It's sort of like the same thing when you're in Microsoft Word and you have that little show me all the hidden details key. It looks a bit like a sort of musical notation. You hit that and all of a sudden you see all the, the spaces and the full stops and everything else appears. Well this is the same thing. You're seeing all the constraints. It's parallel, that's a tangential constraint saying that my fillet had to be tangential to the outer edge, this outer edge that I'm pointing to. Now if they get in the way and you're getting a bit annoyed by all those sort of things, you can get rid of them. Uh, there is a way of doing it. And I think it may be under, oh, it's in the sketch palette on the left hand side here. So look here on the left, see where it says show constraints. If you click on left click on that, they disappear. If you want to see them all, they don't bother you so you know what's going on. That can be very useful sometimes if you're trying to do something and it seems that Fusion won't let you do it. Usually it's a constraint that's stopping you. Okay, so I'll get rid of them just for the moment to make it easier for us to see. Right now, I'm going to stop the sketch because I want to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to stop this sketch so you can see it. It's now gone to a 3D view. It's a 2D sketch in a 3D view. I'm now going to make this into a 3D object. How am I going to do that? Well, by selecting the surface that I want to move and change. So there it is there. I left click it and I see it changes color. Then I've got a couple of choices. I can use my right mouse button and use the press pull function, or I can go to create here, the create menu at the top, and extrude. I'll do extrude for the moment. You see that arrow pops up? If you want, it tells you which, which direction you want to extrude from. So at the moment, I can go up or I can go drag the arrow and go down. Um, I'm going to go up, and I want it to go up by six millimeters because that's my defined dimension. Hit enter. And now I have a three-dimensional shape. And if I click this and left click and hold my left mouse button down, I can drag around and have a look at the shape. So I've created myself the basic outline of my key tag. Next thing now, I want to do something a little bit different. Um, I want to create a another surface in here that's recessed into the key tag. So to do that, I'm going to select the surface. So I click the select button here, left click it. Hover over the top of the surface till it highlights, left click again, and that surface is selected. Now when I, once I've selected, I'm going to go to sketch, and this time choose the offset function. Left click the offset function. Now hover over that surface, the outer edges, and you see how they're all highlighted in blue? The blue highlighting? Once they're highlighted in blue, it means they're selected. I select this now, and I can offset inwards or outwards as I choose. Now, just visually, I'm going to do it by eye. The dimension that I've chosen is minus 
3.502 from the outer edge. I'll just make it minus 3.5. So that's minus 3.5. Hit enter. Oh, I made it minus 305. Let's do it minus 3.5. There we go. Enter. And now I've got an offset sketch geometry on the inside of my outer edge. Okay. Now, I want to see that in 3D, so I'm going to drag it around a little bit. I'm going to recess that down a little bit. So I'll go to, this time I'm going to select it again, select the surface that I want to recess. There it is there. And I'm going to right click and use the press pull function just to show you. So press pull. This time I'm grabbing it and I'm going to press it downwards, but not 10 millimeters. I only want to go downwards negative 2 millimeters. Negative 2. Hit enter. And I've got that little recess that I want, which suits me just fine. Okay, now, I don't mind that. That's a pretty good-looking key tag, but it's a bit bland. I want to put my, my initials in there. So I'm going to make it a little bit larger by scrolling. I'll put my initials in there. So let's sketch some text. I'm going to sketch, choose text, and now I'm going to have to find out what surface do I want to write this text on. I want it on this surface here. You see how it highlights? So my text is going on this plane. I left click and select it, and I'll move this browser out of the way, it's annoying me at the moment. And now I'm being asked where do I want to start my text. So I'm going to start it up the top here, specify text position, left click, and off on another screen, this little text box has popped up. So drag it in, if you've only got one, so I've got three screens sitting here, if you've got one, then uh, it'll pop up on your screen. But if it doesn't and you're using two screens, just have a look for it somewhere else. You can spend hours being frustrated trying to find it otherwise on the one screen. Okay, text. I'm going to write my name, which is David. And you see it's sort of a bit around the wrong way. So I can choose the angle and drag it if I want to, just by hand, by grabbing the drag handle and dragging it around like this. Or if I wanted, the other way of doing it is just to, to use the degrees over here and spin it 180 degrees. Once that's done, I can grab the center hand here and push it into position where I'd like it, sort of in the middle about there. But I want it a bit larger, so I'm going to make it 20 millimeters high and um, change, um, at the moment it's giving me Arial, I'm going to make it bold, but I don't like Arial, I'm going to use Calibri, so I'm just typing in C for Calibri, there it is down there, I'll make it Calibri font and I'm going to have to adjust its position one more time, so I'll grab it here on the grab handle, push it in there. When you're doing text, Especially if you're going to 3D print on a smaller object, just remember that you need large text because this looks big. In actual size, it looks here around about 150 millimeters by 100 millimeters, but our key tag's less than half that size. So if you make the text too small, it comes out looking very hard to distinguish on a small 3D print. So be bigger and bolder with your text rather than smaller and too minute. Okay, I'll click OK, and I'm happy with that. Now I've drawn my text on there, but really I can't model that, I can't 3D print that because it's a two-dimensional shape. I need to be able to 3D print it. So to do that, once again, use my select tool. I'll select the geometry that I've just created with my name, the text, left click it, and now I'm going to pull it. So I'm just going to right click, press pull, and I'm going to select uh, the distance I want to do it which will be 2 millimeters, so I don't want it sitting above the top of my key tag. 2 millimeters in the upwards, and you can see that it's already started to model that shape for me, so I know I'm going in the right direction. And I don't want to taper, I'll just keep the taper there. I'm joining. If I wanted to, I could remove material if I'm going into the body. If I'm embossing, but I'm not, I'm just raising it out. So I click OK. And now I've got my name on the key tag. Okay, that's all well and good you say, but what about the other side? I mean, the other side's pretty bland and boring. Very true. Okay, now I want to mirror this on the other side. So in order to mirror it, I'm going to have to create a plane about which Fusion will know to mirror it. So to create a plane, a work plane, we're going to go to Construct here. Select, and there's lots of different types of planes. You can go through them all at your leisure if you're bored and can't sleep. I'm going to just select Offset Plane and that means that I need to select one plane I'm going to select this top one and then I'm going to say my work plane which I'm about to create is going to be offset from this plane 
Now I've selected the top, I know that the object is 6 millimeters thick, I want the plane to be exactly in the middle because I'm going to mirror about that plane, so I'm going to drop it down by 3 millimeters. so that's negative 3 millimeters, and that's where I want to position my work plane. So there it is right in the middle, as you can see now. Okay, once that's done, I can now start my mirror function. So I'm going to create a mirror. To do that, I'm going to go to Create, go down to Mirror, now, I've got a choice of some things to mirror. I can mirror a feature, a face, a body, or a component. I'm going to use a feature because a feature is something that you've done that changes the workplace geometry. In this case, it's going to be a extrude. So I'm going to use a feature. I'm going to select features. Now, the mirror plane I have to select, Fusion will know where do I want to mirror it about. I want to mirror about that plane that I just created. You see it highlighting? I've selected the plane. So it knows I want to um, select a feature. Well, I didn't select the feature, had I? Alright, so let's go with this to the feature that I want to select. I want to select um, my extrude feature. This is it here. The first extrusion. I did that little reef or the second extrusion. Oh. Well, the second extrusion was really my printing. The first extrusion was the original three-dimensional shape. It's the second extrusion, that one there. Alright, so I've selected that feature and I want to extrude it. So, features, objects, I need to select the object, which is that extrusion that I want it to, to do, that one there. And now the mirror plane, I'll select that again. Should have done that already and we should be able to click OK. Alright, now if I spin this around up, upside down to show you, we've got you see now we've got that duplicate, don't have to bother doing it, it's just we've done it for us. Now if I did the same thing with my t printing, which I could, I'd get a mirror image of that, but it'll end up being upside down and the wrong way around. So I'm a bit stuck trying to do that. So instead, what I'll do is spin the object around like this uh, and show myself and do my writing now on here, just the way I did before, like that. So I can work out which way I want my writing to go. So my original writing is like this. I might start it back to front and go David down this side. You can choose however you want to do it. Go through the same process. Create yourself some text. Select the position where you want the text to be. Um, type in the... Uh, so you want your text to start from there. Type in your name. And then you want it to be... Well, I'm mine I decided to be 20 millimeters. Yours can be any height that you want. Um, the type font, I think I chose to have Calibri. Um, type in C for Calibri, there it is. And position it where you want it. Uh, I think I also did mine bold as well. So let's make it bold. Click OK. And we wanted to pu push that thing out. So we right clicked it, we press pulled it, and in this case we wanted to pull it upwards by a distance of 2 millimeters. So make that 2 and we should see it being modeled there, and there it is, okay, and we've done it. So that's our key tag, all settled and done. Now, very important, we need to save this. So at the moment that it's called Untitled, we want to be able to save the object. So up here's the Save button, click the Save button, name your project, so I'll call it Demo Key Tag 3, David maybe, so you know it's mine, 3, and it's going to save it in this location called Demo Project and Master. Now you don't have to save it there. Now you will have your own storage location because Fusion 360 is very much a cloud-based program. It won't save your projects to your computer desktop. It'll save it to the cloud storage area owned by Autodesk. And you'll have your own profile there. So find yourself or set yourself up somewhere somewhere to do and set up some um, projects with files and subfolders so you can find your projects. You can also um, transfer these and download them when you want to, to be able to create files on your computer, but they will save onto Autodesk's um, cloud storage. So I'm going to save it here under um, Demo Project, this file here, Demo Project, and uh, under Master. Click Save, and it's saved. And you're done. I'll do another tutorial soon on rendering this, making it look really good, and making it look lifelike in whatever material you choose. Um, but for then, see you soon. Bye.